So hey everyone, my name is Najib. Um, as he mentioned, I'm going to be cre creating a talk about creating belonging in remote teams. It's no surprise right now, everyone's really used to working remotely. And as we call it, you know, we're in our second inning of remote work. For a lot of companies or organizations, what they're really struggling with is, hey, we are we have 80 people on Zoom, but yet, even though we have so many people on Zoom, we still feel isolated. Sometimes working remotely feels lonely for a lot of people. So how do we get your remote team to be more connected than ever before? That is what I want to share in this talk. Well, let's start with, you know, why people choose remote work. You know, so right now, the reason why people choose remote work is, well, because they have to, they don't really have much choice. But what about before? Why did people choose remote work? Well, there were a whole bunch of reasons. One flexible schedule, working from anywhere, having no commute, spending time with family, and the ability to work from home was largely one of the reasons that people worked from home. And personally for myself, I work remotely for eight years. And again, when we have got impacted by COVID, one thing I do want to point out is working remotely normal times versus working remotely during the pandemic is two different things. Well, this is how and why people are choosing it, but how have our lives been impacted? Well, if you look at the transition of everything into remote work, a Gartner study found that company leaders found that 80% allow employees to work remotely at least part of the time after the pandemic, and almost half will allow them to work full time. So it's impacted in the companies not only in the first thing, which is the talent, because a lot of people are choosing remote work, but also productivity, because this is impacting because people are able to kind of focus for the most part. Again, it depends on family situations, but overall, people are able to be more productive than they were in the office, including job satisfaction and living, because remote work has impacted how we are buying real estate and a lot of city centers are being displaced and people are going to other open areas like the suburbs. That is all the benefits of it. But what's next? We've overlooked the downsides. The biggest struggles with working remotely is one, collaboration, and two, loneliness. These two encompass a 40% of the challenges and not even mentioning being in a different time zone than your teammates. So we're connected every single minute, yet we still feel isolated. We have Slack, project management tool, video conferencing, emails, notifications upon notifications, yet we still find it difficult to connect. Tech has progressed in all areas, but without the proper use of tools, we're feeling left alone. And when it comes to managers, their struggles are the two biggest struggles are maintaining company culture and team cohesiveness. Almost 70% struggle with both of them. But what do we do? Well, even though remote teams are more disconnected and fragmented, the thing is half of employees are feeling unattached to their company. They put in the time and they do the bare minimum work. This leads to productivity and burnout. And how do we solve it? Well, we have to understand that it is a, not a once and done kind of activity. It's like farming. It's going to take some time. At the same time, it's like working out as well. But the good news is there are different ways of doing it. If you take a look at the different phases of a company from forming to storming to norming to performing, we can create different solutions for different types of team members and where they are on a journey. For people who are just starting to join a team, we can bring them in a better fashion get to, and have them get to know others casually. For storming, when there's conflict resolution, having being listened to and having understanding helps a lot. When it comes to norming, which is improving cooperation, entertainment, deepening relationships, it can be both sync and async. And when it comes to performing, 
recognizing the employee, their self-fulfillment needs and motivation, both intrinsically and intrinsically, helps a balance all that in the future. One interesting quote I heard from one of the holiday parties that I hosted through patio was that I like this party because there's no pressure to drink or dance or dress up. We have to recognize that employees have different needs and one solution doesn't fit for everyone. So if we all work together and work with the team to create the different activities and ongoing situations that helps them to belong, the better it is. Whether it's a virtual cooking class or yoga or weekly games night, there are a lot of options. Ultimately, it comes down to the team itself. I've had hundreds of managers ask me for team building ideas. I always start with what's the goal. Is it to get to know others casually? Is it to have cooperation, motivation, or entertainment? Because once you can understand from that point of view, it helps a lot. Now, it might take five to 10 hours a month of doing this. You can do it yourself, or you can get a partner to do this for you. In the end, it's needed, because when it's done right, it'll improve the productivity, mental health, and well-being of employees. I've hosted several holiday parties, and this was one of the most crucial learnings that I've learned. So if you have any questions, or if you're still trying to figure out, hey, do you have any ideas for team building or how I can help for my team? Just let me know. You can just reach me at patio.to or just ping me on Twitter at it's Najib.